Welcome to the boardroom. I'm Roz Golden Wood, and I am here with Lisa Joseph Metellus. She is the co head of basketball marketing and services at CAA. I, I know you have a lot on your plate. I mean, uh, you have a number of high profile clients, a list that's highlighted by three time champion Dwayne Wade. And then, of course, this year's number one draft pick in Zion Williamson. Um, as CAA's co head of mar basketball marketing and services, what are the actual services that you provide for these athletes? <laughs> well, our group, um, and I, I shared that co-head title along with two other of my colleagues, um, Lloyd and Jessica, and we basically oversee an amazing team of people that focuses on servicing from a marketing standpoint, day-to-day -day client management, just making sure that our clients are um, service on from all standpoints, whether it's personal, whether it's business, uh, marketing strategies, business partnerships, um, PR, we kind of run the whole gamut for them. Absolutely. And one of the big success stories you've had is Dwayne Wade's career and how you've managed his marketing and business opportunities. Um, what's the history of your relationship and how were you able to become synonymous with Dwayne Wade's brand? Um, well, I've had the, you know, for me, I think I've been um, lucky, I like to say blessed, really, to be in a position to have been part of the journey with him. Um, not necessarily, I wouldn't say from day one, maybe day two. <laughs> so I started working, you know, with Dwayne uh, right after his rookie year. Um, and I was kind of bought on through his agent, Henry Thomas, who, rest in peace, um, passed away about two years ago. But I had met Henry um, just in previous dealings. I was, you know, I was raised in Miami, grew up here, went to college here at the University of Miami, and did an internship with the Miami Heat. And that's kind of how Henry and I connected. And years later, he, you know, landed Dwayne as a client. And I think for him, realized very quickly that Dwayne really had the potential of being a superstar. And Henry was based in Chicago and I was based in Miami and he wanted someone who was gonna be on the ground with him to kind of help um, facilitate and guide him through um, this, this entire journey. And I think, you know, Henry saw the work that I had done with Alonzo Mourning, who at the time I was working with as well. Um, and so he trusted me with, with Dwayne and 16 years later, here we are. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. You saw the potential in him. Also, they saw the potential in you. You know, when you think of all that Dwayne Wade has been doing, especially in the last years of his career and now in retirement, he seems just as busy. Um, you know, it, it, he's got um, endorsement deals, media deals, China deals. How yeah. did you, let's be specific, how did you two work together to craft this vision and see it actually come to fruition? Right. So I think very early on, um, the biggest thing for both of us was having a level of trust and confidence. Um, I think a big part of it was both he and Henry having confidence in me to help guide the process. And then also there was a point in his career when we all joined CAA and really was able to beef up our team um, I know I get a lot of the credit for the work that he's done, but in reality, it's really been a team effort with the resources that we have through CAA and just really looking at what were Dwayne's passions, what was going to um, get him up to show up to a commercial shoot or to sit through a business meeting. We've just honed in on what his passions were, created businesses around them, partnered him with some of the best brands in the business and created relationships and really long-term relationships with a lot of um, the business partners that he has. So for us, I think really communicating and listening to what he wanted and having a team around us that can help us guide us through like how we achieve certain things. I mean, there's so many examples that we can talk about. One, one that I really love is, you know, him creating his sock company and where it went from, you know, sitting in a room one day and Dwayne started wearing all of these really crazy socks and different colors colorful socks that we just weren't used to seeing and then he said you know I want my own sock company one day <clears throat> and for me I was able to lean in on my colleague Lloyd Fisher and say Dwayne wants to start his own sock company like Dwayne would always come to us with these like 
crazy ideas and it was up to us to figure out how we can either get it done or manage expectations, right? And I think um, that's a great example of where we went to him and said, okay, we don't think you need to start a soft company from scratch, but here's a brand who's actually looking to get into the NBA space. And at the time that was Stance. And long story short, we created an amazing partnership with Stance where he became part owner of the company. Um, we created his own line of socks through Stance. Um, I think he had 12 different collections. <laughs> And at some point, um, when we were getting to renegotiate the deal with Stance after a few years had passed, we all decided that there was still a, an opportunity to continue to grow that market. And how we did that was we partnered with Stance to create another company called Parkway that Dwayne owns even more shares of that company. And now Parkway is in Target at over 1200 Target stores and is online. And that just stemmed from, so seeing kind of that trajectory, stemming from one day saying, I love socks and socks is the way that I can express myself. I want a company to like, I think this has been like eight, nine years in the making where he actually has his own sock company at Target. That just talk, that just kind of shows that for, for me, like listening to a client, understanding his passion, being around people who can help us achieve that and, and getting it done and seeing success. Lisa, you're going to be busy for at least the next decade with the signing of Zion Williamson. Um, his potential seems limitless. How do you balance his marketing potential with still all of the work he still needs to do on the court? Yeah, well, I think the biggest thing is that the work on the court comes first, right? And I think, you know, between starting the, the season off with an injury to having a very <laughs> limited season um, because of the virus, you know, the short time that he was on the court, I think proved to a lot of people why he, you know, came out of school and why he was the number one draft pick and saw so much potential. So I think we're all just kind of excited to see that again. But I think the biggest thing is, um, the work has to be done on the court, first and foremost. And, you know, I always say, you know, when the work happens, everything else will come. For him, everything else has come along with it. And I think our job as his team, myself, along with Austin Brown, his agent, and Lloyd, we all just try to, as you can imagine, there's a ton that came with him coming in, partners, people who wanted to be involved. And I think we were just very strategic along with his parents who were very involved and Zion and saying, again, the same thing. We want to partner with blue chip companies. We want to partner with companies that we see a long-term relationship in the long-term future where this is not just a one-off and partners that we can build with. And we don't need 20 partnership deals. We need a very select few um, that can grow with us. And then ultimately, he's 19. And I think that's important, right, to keep in mind is that, you know, he's still a 19 year old young man. And in many ways, you know, still weird, a teenager, right. Um, so I think the priority for him is he wants to play basketball. And we just need to and it's a continue, it, it, you know, it's it's a daily conversation of what do we add to his plate? What can we minimize? And not burn him out and and this is all obviously before before covid but just really being selective in um who he partners with is very important what is the selection process because just before you know you were telling us how a, a vet in d wade was pitching you ideas i want to do socks you know i want to do fashion i'm sure zion is still figuring out a lot about not only what his brand is but who he is he's 19. Absolutely. but <laughs> so when there's 40 brands trying to work with Zion Williamson, what is the criteria when you pick one? Yeah, I think it goes back to what he's passionate about and, and who he what is who, Zion passionate about. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, what a 19 year old would be, you know, games that he plays, brands that he wears, you know, everybody knows that. You know, there was a, a, it was a competitive landscape when it came to, came to what shoe deal he was going to sign. And ultimately, it came down to joining the family that he was most connected to. And so it wasn't about the money. It was more so about 
you know, what do I feel good in? What do I feel great playing in? And, and do we share, you know, do we have common things that we share as a brand and as a, as a personality? Um, and I think that's really what, what it comes down to is that gut feeling um, and whether that's Zion or his mom, it really, a lot of conversations, a lot of conversations and discussions about what makes sense um, for him to be a part of. What's key for you in recruiting and landing a superstar? Um, that's a great question. Well, I think for us collectively, we, and, and this is just something we talk about a lot internally is when we're looking at clients, we want them to be a good person. Like we look for good people. Like, you know, when we're having conversations about our clients, there's so many moments where we look at our roster and we say, wow, we have a great group of good people. And, you know, that extends to good families because you don't want to be in a situation where you're working with people you don't like or people who just, you know, it's not worth the drama. Um, I went through a lot of drama with Dwayne. Like, and it's very public, right? So a lot of the BS that he had to go through, whether it was just everything that you could think of, you know, it was a matter of that he was worth going through all of that for, because ultimately he was a good person with a good heart and good intent. Um, and I think that kind of is what motivates you to get up for your client in moments where it's not great. You know, it's good to be there when, they're holding the championship and the trophy and you could be part of that ride. But it's when, you know, you hit that valley and that low point, you, you have to have, you got to come into it with the same energy and the same motivation. Um, and I think for me, it, it comes down to connecting with people who are just really good people mm -hmm. and who want to win. And, um, and I don't mean, you know, just on the court, but just in life. And, you know, I want the person who, I'm working with to care about me just as much as I care about them as a person, as opposed to just what I could do for you. So all of that matters to me. Right. You know, just landing the superstar doesn't certify the win, right? Like there, it sounds like, you know, it's going to, you have, have to be resilient. You also are not only investing in their business strategy. You sound like you're investing in their families Absolutely. as they work with you. Um, so you know, I think resilience, especially during a time right now, is important. Uh, how are you guys advising and staying creative with your clients during this changing landscape right now with COVID-19? I mean, the NBA season's still in limbo. Are, are there still opportunities? Are you creating them? Like, what? how do you handle this time? Um, it's been interesting because, you know, I always, like, for me, it's not just business. It's so personal, right? I think because, you know, you as the person I'm talking for myself, I'm dealing with it personally as well. You know, so we're all kind of going through this. And I think um, for us, we just have had numerous conversations as a group and as a team. Surprisingly, it's been very busy. Um, I think that we're navigating and helping our partners, our brand partners, figure out what makes sense for our guys to do. People are coming, you know, out of the woodwork with ideas, some that make sense, some that don't, you know, and, and really just staying in constant communication with, with our clients because, you know, they're, they're having to go through a huge loss playing for the season, not knowing if they're going to play. Um, and our job is to just kind of help guide them, keep them motivated, you know, again, touching into their passion points. What do they love doing at this moment? You know, I go back to, again, um, even though Dwayne's not playing anymore, his show was put on hiatus that he had and his passion is wine. So we took that and created an IG live show called The Wine Down, where every Friday night he can talk about his wine. That was a way to kind of stay creative in that space. And so... For us, every guy is so different. Um, a big chunk of our time has been on guys who want to give back and how do we help them navigate that, right? So there's always this Im immediate rush to help everyone and help communities. And we have an amazing team that we've all worked really hard to figure out what makes sense for what guys. So we have guys that have done, you know, community initiatives, giving back, feeding children, feeding communities, healthcare workers, 
that has probably been a big chunk of what a lot of our guys have been involved in during this time. Absolutely. And just kind of taking their feeling, their gut feeling of wanting to do something and trying to funnel them in the right direction that is meaningful. Absolutely. Uh, so let's talk about you real quick, because what you've been able to do, I've become a fan <laughs> since I've met you at the NBA's uh, Women's Empowerment Forum. And I've seen you at Har speak at Harvard and, you know, I've hosted panels you've been on. And every time I hear from you, I'm like, this woman is busting butt. <laughs> and, um, you know, I feel like oftentimes you're so modest in how you describe it. Um, but to really put it into perspective, the way you've been trailblazing in this um, industry is incredible. Um, it's a wildly male dominated industry um, of agency and marketing and places like CAA and then the like other companies like like that. Um, and it's it's rare to see a black woman, any woman and certainly rarer for a black woman to have a clientele at the level that you do. So how have you carved your own lane in this business? Um, I would say the biggest thing has been consistency. Uh, I was just, it's funny, I was having a conversation with um, someone recently that asked me the same kind of question. And I, you know, started out very young. I started out like fresh out of college. I, with an internship with the Miami Heat at like 20 years old and really kind of had a very, you know, I, I, I'm still this, I'm still this way to this day. I just kind of like, you know, I don't really care or, or pay attention to what or how people feel about me. I kind of feel like I'm black and white, you know, I tell you how I feel, it is what it is. Um, and I was like that at 20, that, that didn't probably work out too well for me at that age. And I had to go through a lot of hurdles and um, obstacles because I think that as a woman, and I think it's gotten a lot better over time. We're still not over that hump, but I feel like back then in the you know late 90s, it was really hard for me to be taken seriously. Um, it was hard for me not to fall into various stereotypes as a black woman in this business and why I was in the business. Um, and I think the thing that kind of got me through it was I just worked and I just, you know, was, I kind of put my head down, blocked out the noise and knew really why I was in it, right? I was very confident in why I was in the business, what I wanted to accomplish. So I had to kind of let everything else go and keep my head down and work and to be consistent knowing that, you know what, at some day, you, at some point you realize that, like, I'm really here to do the work. I'm not here for any other reason. Um, and so just through a lot of trial and error, I think consistency would be the biggest thing for me and learning to utilize my voice. Um, and I always give credit to um, the men in my circle, men like Alonzo and men like Dwayne, who made sure that I not only had a seat at the table and not only did I have a voice, but you were going to hear this and you were going to listen. And I think that has really helped me um, continue to gain confidence, but also um, be successful in what I do. That, that's so powerful because I think a lot of times as women in business, we hear about we, we need our women supporting women, we need our female mentors, as we absolutely do. But we also need male champions. You know, people that's also open the door. For sure. Like, there's no way, there is no way that as many female um, and women mentors that I have in my life, there's absolutely no way that I would be where I am right now if. Dwayne wasn't as vocal as he was about who I was in his life. Um, people just wouldn't take me as seriously. And listen, eyes rolled, ugh, we gotta listen to her. Like, you know, ugh, well, she's got the last word. Well, you know, it is what it is. And so, I, you know, I, I, I commend him so much for that. And I think it's those types of people, it's those types of voices, a lot from men that, has allowed me to be in the position that I'm in. And it's, like you said, it's so necessary. Well, well, now that you have this voice and a seat at the table and people are all listening to you as you make these deals and bring the money in, I'm curious about what your negotiation style is in these situations and how you develop that. 
Um, I, and, and I will say that you'll probably hear a ton of noise in the background. Um, my kids just decided to blast the TV and the vacuum at the same time. So, I mean, this is what our world, this is what our world is today. And, um, yeah, we're just going with the flow here. Um, I would say, I don't know if I necessarily have a style. I, you know, and I don't, I, and I can't say that, like, for us, when we, we work together collectively as a team. And so I rely a lot on one gut about what a client would want, what makes sense to fight for. Um, and yeah, I think a lot of it for me is gut and just following like what I think the client would want and what's important to them. Um, so I wouldn't say I have like a certain negotiation Scott style. Do you feel like you have to be extra stern or more serious are you a yeller or do you talk like yourself <laughs> like how do you exist in these that rooms is such a great question and the funny thing is i may answer this one way and how people choose to hear that message will be completely different so um definitely not a yeller um i think for me it's uh, this is such an interesting question um, stern, right? So again, I think that very black and white. I don't really, like, I feel like it's just a waste of time to be us. So it is what it is. Here's what we need. Here's what we want. Here's how the client feels. Here's what sucks. Here's what's great. You know, I'm, I'm definitely more, I am definitely more of a straight shooter, but I don't think that, um, and I always tend to have to preface it by saying, you know, I don't want to waste people's time. Like, I feel like a lot of times we try to find like the flowery words to say what we need to say. It's wasting my time. It's wasting yours. Here's what it is. And I always, for me, want people to respect that because I feel like I want you to know that I'm being honest. I want you to know that I'm being candid. You're going to get exact, like there's no second guessing what and how I am feeling. And that's doing me a service and you a service as well. Um, and I think, you know, hopefully people respect that. Not everybody takes it the right way, but ultimately for me, it's just about like, let's just cut to the chase. You know, let's just have a real conversation. Let's, you know, let's just cut the BS. It's not necessary. It's, that would appreciate it. And lastly, what advice would you give to young women trying to get into this industry? Um, persevere, um, stay consistent, um, be prepared, you know, when you have, you know, your moment and it could be any moment, right? Whether it's a moment in front of a potential client, or it could be a moment in front of somebody who you would like to mentor, um, or who you would like to be, to be their mentor, mentee. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's important is being prepared. And I don't think you need to know everything or come across like you know everything. I think it's refreshing when, you know, people are honest about, you know, what they know and don't know and what they want to learn. Um, so for me, it's really just about being consistent um, and just persevere through it, you know? It's like a lot of the stuff that they say is cliche, but it's real and, um, yeah and 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 just fight like just do what you got to do like fight um and not in a not in a negative way but just really just pushing through you know and that's what i kind of feel like especially very early on in my career i had to just push through the noise and push through a lot of what people may have thought of me or how they viewed me it's mm -hmm. just like okay cancel it out stay focused head down get the job done because ultimately like you get the job done, they'll look at, mm, oh, maybe, hmm, okay, maybe she's all right. Or, you know, like, it's like people, you gotta, you gotta prove yourself. And mind you, like, I feel like we still always have to prove ourselves. I don't think that, I'm definitely not at a level where I feel like I can't prove myself. Like, I always have to prove myself um, at various and different stages in my career or just who I am in my life. You know, I have to prove myself through a zoom call with kids in the background <laughs> you know what i mean like it's like nah, i got this i got this it's true so you know you just keep pushing 
Absolutely. That's a, that's a word and a message and a great way to finish this off. Lisa, you're the bomb. Thank you for joining us on The Boardroom. I really appreciate Thanks for having me.